good time to start today's talk. Today's speaker is Professor Miyasuke Matsuhiro at Adam Mikiewicz University. Uh, Professor Matsuhiro has got his doctoral degree at 1991, and he studied mainly on approximation balakalatitis functions and the function spaces and so on and so on, especially interpolation theory. And so he published many, many important papers on these fields. Okay. So, Miyatek, so could you please start now? Yes. Thank you once again, uh, because you are now in the morning, early in the morning, I think, at o'clock in Poland. No, no, no problem. However, okay. so at first, let me say thank you very yes. much to Professor Yoshihiro Savaro, uh, Savano for his kind invitation, and also to, to David Hauer to, 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 to give a talk in, at this uh, a Asia Pacific Analysis and PD seminar. So oh, I visited Tokyo two times thank, thanks to, to, to Yosuhiro and I enjoyed, enjoyed very much to cooperate with him. I never been in Australia, however, now I have a chance to really to be using you know, this, this video and connection. Okay, so my talk is related with, with the random polynomials in Banach spaces. Is a joint talk. I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but we don't see your screen. Could you share your screen? Ah, oh. open it. It's open now. No. Oh, why it's not open? Uh, it was open, but now you I did not find your screen. What? Where is it? Moment. So, if possible, so you can send me the wait, file. Wait, I, wait, I, wait. I can help you. Okay. Okay. Now. It seems okay. Yes, okay. Now that's okay. No, I am sorry because you know I change I change the the, the, the system using the, the, the special drive of my wife because it was a not con it was not good connection. Okay, so this is the the the, the, the schedule of my talk. So I will give uh, some definitions. So this will be an introduction, and then later on I will talk about some joint results with Andreas Defant related with, with this topic. So before I will start to, to, to present some results, so let us give some fundamental definitions. Of course, the, the, the symbols are very known for you, but nevertheless, let me, let me, let me present this in a compact way. So we, we have a multi-index, so the set, the set of couples of integers. So we consider the polynomials on CN, with the dimension n, and we have a, a product of monomials, which is which, which will be denoted in short z to power alpha. The modulus of this multi-index is exactly the, the sum of the of the modulus of one coordinate. And factorial this will be uh, of multi-index a product of factorials of of each coordinates whenever they are positive um, integers. As usual, the symbol of the polynomial is, is, is standard. So the degree of the polynomial, so this is the maximum of the, of the modulus of multi-index, which the coefficient standing in the sum is not zero. So we consider also the, the space of trigonometric polynomials on the n-dimensional torus. And similarly, the degree is defined in this in the similar way. If, if the degree is less or equal to m, we are saying that this is space of polynomials of degree m. So a little bit about history, why, why you know, the, the topic related with the polynomials. As we know, in, in, in the theory of function of many variables, there is a beautiful area related with the, with the polynomials which, which have a deep application in, in approximation theory and other areas and, and probability and, and then Fourier analysis and so on and, and in finite dimensional holomorphy. So in a, in, a, in, a fa in, a, in a famous paper published in 1954, Salim and Zygmunt, they considered trigonometric polynomials of the following form. As you can see, this, this is the sequence of random variables are Rademacher in fact, they consider Rademacher sequence. So then K in 
1960 extended the, the, the results they, 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 they obtained to multidimensional case. And now in literature, we are seeing about famous uh, Kahane Salem Zygmunt inequalities. So later on, I will be saying KCZ inequalities for short. So they play an important role in Fourier analysis, analytic number theory, holomorphy in high dimension, and very recently in the theory of Boolean functions. So in, 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 in collaboration with Stefan and Antonio Perez from Spain, we published three papers where we show application to the theory of Boolean function of the multidimensional uh, KCZ in, in inequalities, but there is no time to, to talk about this today. So let me let me present the first this multidimensional um, Salem Zygmunt inequality. It states the following: there is an absolute constant C that if we take positive integers m and n, m bigger or equal n, and we consider the trigonometric polynomial of the degree less or equal m on the dimensional torus, then we are able always to find this, the, the, the signs for which the supremum, the modulus supremum taken on the, on the dimensional torus of the following random polynomials and estimated by the following expression on the right. You see here, this is the Hilbert norm, the coefficients and here appears a constant depending on the dimension of the torus, the degree of the polynomial. So this was extended. By the way, this inequality found many beautiful applications in, in, in many problems in, 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 in number theory and so on. But okay, uh, next one, extended version it says that for every a bigger than zero and m and integers m n bigger than two. And all families of independent Bernoulli variables on a probability measure space and all coefficients, the probability of the following event is less or equal than some constant depending on this A. And this constant can be calculated. So it's a mag magic number which, which, which comes from the calculations. So we see now if we take a bigger than the following number connected with, with this equality, this constant on the right here is strict less than one. Then we see that for this a, because you see here we have bigger or equal, and here less or equal, so strictly less or equal plus this event plus this one gives the probability one, because we are on the probability measure. So surely we have that the probability of this event is bigger than zero. So this shows that we are able to find omega from this capital omega for which really we have this inequality. So if this is the sequence of classical, for example, Bernoulli variables, surely we find sine plus minus one that the supremum over n-dimensional truth will be estimated by the following Hilbert norm up to constant depending on the, on the dimension of the torus and the, the polynomial of the degree. So you see this supremum is taken over dimensional torus. So this means that on the, on the CN, if we consider L infinity norm, so this supremum really is, a, is the same as the supremum over the, the union, dimension poly disk with an infinity norm. So the people started to look, what about if we change, if we change the, 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 the subset over which we calculate the supremum of the polynomial. For example, in CN, we can we can take any in any we can introduce any any norm. And of course all norms are equivalent but depends on the dimension So the dimension, whenever it grow to infinity, we may grow to infinity. So, but the point is, suppose we consider classical, classical norm like empty norm. So there are two cases. This is the year 2000 where Boas with the following estimation. So if we have P between one and infinity, the coefficients real positive integers 
uh, as, as, as before, then we can always find the signs for which in the case P between one and two, now you take coefficients of the polynomial of special time n factorial over alpha factorial of the multi-index. You see, this is the polynomial of degree M homogeneous of degree M precisely. Then we have the following estimation. Now you see it appears the power of M factorial the power is the conjugate for this P. Whenever P is on the right hand of two, we have the following estimation, which thinks now on the right hand, when P is bigger than two, the dimension of the of the of this. Mietek, just a second, please. Just a second, please, Mietek. So what is B R P N? So is it uh, what and is the difference? So L P N, this is Cn equate with LP norm. Uh, so yes, uh, you need to ball. Yes. Okay, okay, understand. Thank you. So, so simply, if we if we take the coordinate z1 z until zn, we take the modulus z1 to power p plus, plus modulus zn to power p, and everything to power one over p. So this is exactly dimensional p n space. Okay, so the point was, so later on I will, people started, you know, to extend because of application to some problems, the, 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 the variance of, of uh, uh, Haynes-Salem inequalities, deep machinery was used. I'm, if I will have a time, I will tell you a few words about this, namely entropy, entropy function for the stochastic processes, deep machinery from this, stochastic processes was applied. And I will present you one result of Bayard where he used this method to get, to get some variants of new variants of, the, of, the, of, the, of this type of inequalities. So now, because of application, we started to see what is, what is the point? Maybe, maybe there is, a, there is a, some abstract way to look for the variant of, this, of these inequalities to get and this this is exactly I would I would like to show you some results we, we we got so maybe quickly I'm sure people know but okay so uh, some some quick notion so we have a measure space so we have a space of measurable strongly measurable functions taking values in a Banach space whenever the, 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 the x is a scalar field so complex number or real Simply, this space of all measurable equivalence, equivalence classes will be denoted by zero. We have a Banach function lattice. Quite often, people are saying Banach function space. So this is a subspace of the space of L zero, which have an ideal property. If you have a two functions, modulus of f or less or equal modulus of g, we know that that g belongs to e. Then f is measurable functions, then f also belongs to e, and the norm of E is less or equal than the norm of G. So this is the, called the, the monotonicity property. So whenever this space is, is a counting measure, we have an N with the, with, the, with the power set, a counting measure. So simply this is omega of N, usually denoted in the letter. So now, if we have a Banach function lattice and Banach space, the Kette Bochner space is the space of all strongly measurable functions for which the norm in X belongs to E. And this is a Banach space with the following norm. In fact, I will, I will use only the case whenever the inner, inner function is finite dimensional at infinity. This is, this is the definition the definition we created for the for for this for this problem of looking for abstract variants of of KCZ equalities. So suppose we have a given Banach space on a probability measure space. We have a sequence of random variables from our space, and we are looking for a function which is defined on the set of positive integers, a sequence. And we have a sequence of norm KN. 
we mainly I, I we will be interested in when k is a complex field. So simply on CN, we introduce the sequence of, of maybe semi-norms or norms. Now we take any positive integers n and k, and we take any finite sequence of elements in infinity n. So again, you see this is C with capital N with maximum norm. So simply we, we write this way. So we take such sequence with the index from A to K, A of them, and then are looking for such kind of inequality. So you see, this is the Kette Bochner with the value is an infinity N. This norm is estimated by Psi of n, so exactly this dimension of an infinity and supremum, supremum over k running. Now we are looking for a sequence. You can see if you look at the sequence of as a matrix, we see that now we here count with respect to i in the norm of sk, where you see sk is the k dimensional with capital K, script k with the given norm. So in order to see more precisely this Buckner space, you see this is exactly the following. Supremum of the modulus of the following expression, you see gamma j is a sequence of independent random variables or measurable functions independent on this measure space. So this is a measurable functions. You calculate the norm in x and you want to estimate by the following expression. So later on, the sequence, we say that the sequence satisfies TSZ inequality whenever of type, we write this strip where Banach lattice, the sequence of the seminorms or norms, and the function psi, provided the above, in, above inequality holds. This is, this is, we are saying that this is an abstract variant of the same, same Zygmunt inequality. So whenever you see, we will take L1 on L infinity here, exactly you will cover the classical case. So, okay. Now idea how to build, how to build such functions to get such abstract estimation. So the first, the first way is the following. So we, we have, a, so I'm giving now the definition and for an abstract Banach lattice in the sense of Ries. So it may be, it may be not the space of all, all measurable functions, I mean, general abstract. So there is a notion of constant which comes from the notion of convexity with p equal infinity but calculated for n vectors. So in, in order not to enter to the, to the, to the definition in the, in, the, in the geometry of Banach lattices, so precisely let me give the definition in this, in this special case. So we are looking for the supremum of the norm or the supremum of the modulus of n elements in our Banach lattice which are sitting in the unit ball. And we denote this new n of x, because x is fixed, you take any positive integer and we calculate this, this non-negative sequence. This sequence has a very interesting, surprisingly very interesting properties. So this is easy to see by the monotonicity. this is non-decreasing. You see supremum is less or equal than the sum. If we apply the triangle inequality, then the, then the norm supremum is the less the norm of the sum. The, the, element is the unit ball because the norm of the this x is the same as the modulus so surely the number this is less or equal than n of course this is non increasing and for n equal one so this is the smallest one is one and next one this is this is sub multiplicative sequence if we take m times n the value of n times n is less the product more delicate fact, the sequence is non-increasing. 
So non-decreasing, non-increasing, so quasi-concave sequence. So this was shown by Abramovich Wozanowski in 1973. So having this inequality, this fact, this is a simple exercise, the limit of this sequence exists. And you take only two values, zero or one. So if the limit is one, then for all n, mu n of x must be equal to n. This, this situation is very interesting whenever the limit is zero. And this is this is this is non-trivial fact. Maybe quickly, because if you calculate the this m constant for the dual, this is the same as the for the original space. And then if you know that the limit is zero, then from this quality I told you. you you can get that all of the duals are Antorovich Banach spaces. So in this case, because if you take the first dual, this means that the dual of this abstract Banach lattice does not contain isomorphic copy of C0. Then from Banach Pelkinski result, original space cannot contain complemented copy of L1. So if you go with all old odd duals, you ha we have such surprising information from this fact. So the problem is, if we have a given Banach lattice function, for example, lattice, for example, on a given space to calculate precisely or how asymptotic of the sequence in general is, is, is not a trivial problem. So we have the following uh, simple observation. If we have a probability, I mean, if we have a um, um, Banach lattice on a, on a, on a, on a, on a measure space, we define the function phi as a generated by a constant, this Banach lattice, and we have a sequence of random variables, then this, this function and this sequence satisfy Hain-Salem Zygmunt inequality, so I am repeating your definition, with this psi generated by this m constant. So if, for example, this sequence is linearly independent, we define in this case, the sequence of norm as, as a sum of those random variables, yes, multiplied by the coefficients which come from the, from the, from the C, C, let's say, to n, we calculate this in, the, in our Banach lattice. That's exactly we are getting. We are getting. We are getting this type of inequality we are interested in. Okay, so to see to see this inequality, we really need to touch this function. So let me show you the very important for application situation where the space here. Is a, is a Orlich space. So let, let me recall, we have a convex functions, Orlich function with mean convex increasing, continuous positive function with, with, with value zero at zero. So the Orlich space on a given measure space is the space of all measurable functions for which we are able to find a positive constant for which this integral is finite. And we know that this is a Banach space under the following norm. So this is exactly the Minkowski functional with you take lambda for which the value of this integral is less or equal one. So it, this norm is called a Luxembourg norm because Luxembourg was the first who, 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 who exactly investigated spaces with this norm. So we are interested, very important in, in, in probability, exponential orish space in probability, the case r equal p is very is very important as, as we know. So this this is exactly the function of e to power or t to power r minus one in order to have a value zero at zero. And we can take any r bigger or equal one and, and finite. So in this case, we have the following. In, even in general, as you see here, we take the power which is a convex function. So exactly now, 
in this in this statement, we consider ordered space over probability measure space with ordered function, which is which is composition of exponential function with a convex function small phi. And we assume this is a technical assumption that this small function phi is a is a submultiplicative with constant gamma, positive constant gamma. So this means locally in a on one coordinate from zero to one and in the second one bigger than zero we have such estimation i mean this is very easy to produce a function of this type then we have the following estimation of this m constant for the origin space so this is exactly estimation the constant C which appear in this estimation is, is exactly E minus one, gamma, which, which, which comes from this inequality and so on. So in the case, whenever we consider phi of T equal T to power R, so we simply see value at one is one, and this function is exactly super, super multiplicative, so the constant F at one is one. So we have the following estimation for this, for this case for the only exponential e to power t to power r. So now, using this general observation, we can, we can state some inequalities, but the problem, you see the problem is how to calculate this supremum, yeah? And of course, it, it depends what kind of seminars we will have. So this is again a delicate problem. So now we are interested as sub Gaussians random variable because they play important application in, in, in many areas. So let me quickly recall the definition. We have a probability space and we have a random variable. I suppose this is a real, real random variable. So this function is such a sub-Gaussian whenever there exists a S bigger or equal zero for which expectation of this random variable, so integral over omega with this probability measure has the following estimation. O lambda, which is real. In the case whenever F is complex random variable, so we are saying that this is sub Gaussian whenever, whenever we have the following estimation for the real part. Now with the constant lambda, which is Z, which is a complex number. Okay, you know, if we know this, if we apply the Chebyshev inequality immediately from this estimation, we are getting estimation for the distribution of such random variables, it's clear. And then for application, this is very essential to have such such estimation for the for the for the distribution random because we would like to see the asymptotic. And then this gives a very nice asymptotic, but but this is this is not essential now, but I'm talking about what is the point for applications. So the, if we have a sequence of sub Gaussians, we have a S bigger or equal zero, and if we have a sequence of of, of of elements in Hilbert that may be complex or real, we built a random variable as, as, as the following. We are saying this is this is sub Gaussian, yeah. Provided this random variable is a sub Gaussian, and we denote this number by S B of F of n generated of this random variable. The same situation for the for this be for a sequence sub Gaussian whenever the same holds for the real parts and imaginary parts of this our complex sequence. So for applications, the most important are independent sequence of, of, of normal Gaussian random variables. We know that this is this S is equal one or classical independent sequence of Rademacher, quite often called of Bernoulli random variables. This number S for this sequence is also, as we know, equal one. So now 
we can state the, the, the theorem. So suppose we have a real complex sub Gaussian sequence of random variables over always, as it was fixed on a probability measure space with this number X S for this sequence. And when we have the following two statements, which are true for each positive integer, capital N, capital A, capital N, and all sequence, finite sequences, A1, AK from infinity N, and AI, and we are showing coordinates. And the first estimation says that if we take you remember in this orlich power function, exponential power function, r equal to, so let me recall quickly. You remember that this, so this is exactly, we, we consider s equal r equal to and r bigger than two. And that different cases. In the case r equal to, there is a constant depending only on this S, which we have the following estimation. So this is, I mean, if you want to look, you can look for the supremo over the coordinates, but this is a, the, the, in the language of Kette Bochner space. So this function, which appear here, psi of n, is exactly one plus log n to power one over two. This comes from this proposition. And this is the, the norm this sequence L to K. So simply on, on, on C is dimension K, we take the Hilbert norm. Whenever R is bigger than two, and the random variables are uniformly bounded. Yes, we have a then constant which depends on this R, S, and this constant capital M. Therefore, if we consider the conjugate index from this R, then we have completely different estimation because, I mean, in, in the similar way, but here appeared different space. Marcinkiewicz space generated by this conjugate index to R. Here appeared this function phi of n, which we calculated in this proposition. You remember it was even we showed with the constant, to power one over R. What is Marcinkiewicz sequence? So this is a, if you give me P bigger than one and less than infinity, this is a Banach sequence space, which is a symmetric arrangement invariant, the piece of all sequences for which the following supremum is finite. And this is the norm under which this, this is a Banach space. This is this is xk star. This is a decreasing rearrangement of the modulus of our sequence. So simply, you take the modulus, you start it to put because the sequence might be must be in C zero. So we are looking for the biggest, and then push the biggest, the next one biggest, and so on. This is exactly, um, but there is a size definition of this rearrangement. But in the case whenever the sequence in, is in C zero, this is exactly the way how we generate the arrangement. So now, okay, how to apply those results to concrete situations? So the variance, as I told you, I will mention only one proved by Bayard in 2012, where he used the machinery from the stochastic processes. By the way, after that with my former PhD students, we also got uh, using the, 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 the entropy numbers uh, for, for estimation for the getting the, the, the variance of this, of this kind of inequalities where instead of one norm, you have stronger norm. But okay, let me, let me concentrate, concentrate on this example. This is the situation whenever we have homogeneous random polynomial. So we have a we have a probability measure space. You, we take polynomial, n homogeneous polynomials 
polynomial. So what does it mean? The, the modulus of, of multi index is for all cases equal M. Yeah. And now you take such polynomials and now you put you put multiply each coordinate by random variable. So we get if you change omega from you said omega, we, we get a family of polynomials. You keep the coefficients original one, but if if you run over omega, we, we have a family of polynomials which are a measurable function. And though we are interested in what we can say about the, you know, now the problem, what about the, the, the distribution, blah, blah, and so on. And so Bayer put the following for any n dimensional Banach space, simply you take Cn, you take any norm of Cn. And if you take R between T and infinity, you see really magic inequality is true. So you calculate supremum of the modulus of this polynomial. You run over Z in the unit ball of UCN. You can imagine, you can see N and you can introduce any norm on CN. Or you, take, you, can, you take the convex symmetric body on, on CN with, with zero symmetric, and then you take the, the Minkowski functional and this gives you an R. You take the integral, so expectation with respect to this random variable. And this is, look, this is really terrible. This looks, this, this looks, this expression is really why here, you know, the norm is Z prime, supremum of such strange expression, and the log appears. And then usually, whenever we see estimation with log, this is always magic. And this, 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 was by you know study entropy numbers and using this non-trivial estimation of Z from the from the stochastic process. As I, I will show you maybe at the end of my talk quickly. Now we we provide a different approach which recover all these variants of inequalities. Even here you see because any orbit space is on the probability measure space is continuously embedded in L1. So if here we put orange norm, then the orange norm is, is, is bigger than the L1 norm. So if the space is in finite dimensional, the inclusion is not closed. So this means that if you put here, if you, if you put here stronger norm than L1, then of course estimation is better, but it may happen that this depends on the random variables you have, that they may be equivalent. Like we know in the Rademacher sequence, the norm of, of, of the uh, sequence of, uh, if you take a sequence in the Hilbert space and multiply by the Rademachers, then any, any LP, it's, 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 it's equivalent to the norm of, of L2 of the sequence. So now, the definition of the lambda embedding. So you have a Banach space, and we, we say that X lambda embeds into the Banach space whenever there is a linear continuous isomorphic embedding of X into Y such that the norm of T from X to Y and the inverse from the image, because isomorphic embedding means that the range is a closed subspace in Y. So this, this is isomorphism on the range. This is one-to-one projection -one on the range. We get isomorphism and we calculate isomorphy norm of the inverse from, the, from the, the range with the induced norm in Y. And we want the, this product of the norms is less or equal lambda. So this, this is the notion to be lambda embedding for T. So oh, we have the following statement. For any R from infinity, there is a constant depending on R such that for any finite dimensional Banach space E, for every lambda embedding from e to infinity N, for every choice of elements in E, 
we have the following estimation. So you see here, here's the, this psi of m calculated for this exponential ordit function. And here appears the, the calculation of the, of the value of this embedding in L infinity n. Okay, you see, if we have a finite dimensional space, this is well known fact that always we can embed to L infinity n, but the point is, what is the best n? In general, this, this, is, this may be huge. It may be two power n in general. For example, for L1. But if this space is better, then this, this, this is a huge amount of papers about finding and getting on finite dimensional subspaces to L infinity N. I mean, there is some explanation for this, but I, I don't have a time to do, to do this. Okay, so having this, we cover the following variants, not only for one polynomial, a sequence of polynomials. So we have a trigonometric polynomials. We have R between ah, to an infinity. So that two cases are equal to and strictly bigger than two. So then we have the following estimation in the case r equal to, so you see this ordered exponential with r equal to, and this is ordered with, 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 with exponent to power, to power r with r bigger than two. And again, here's this estimation. The similar one in a sense, the, now here it appears the, 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 the calculation of this sequence given z in Hilbert L2, and in Marcinkiewicz prime infinity. And now you take the supremum of those expression and now you run over n-dimensional torus. So this is the version, the version you see, surely this norm is bigger than L1 norm. So if you plug in, then we will we'll recover the, the, some known results. But now we are in the case where we take supremum over the unit ball of n-dimensional Banach space. So this is extension. So again, now I'm using for simplicity now in order not to repeat inequalities, the symbol S R prime K. So whenever R is equal to R prime conjugate is two, this means that we plug in here Hilbert. Whenever R is bigger than two, then L prime is of course strictly less than two. Then in this case, this is Marcinkiewicz three-dimensional L prime infinity. Okay, now for, for applications, this is always, as we know, sometimes if we, if we get idea and we prove some general result and we have some general assumptions, the point is, okay, show me concrete examples with the concrete spaces we are interested in for which we are able to, to estimate or give asymptotic or give a precise formula for expressions which appears in the statement we are looking for. So this is the, the point here. It's exactly finding the best possible dimension of infinity that we can embed. You see, if we, if we do such embedding, so this shows that via this embedding, we can calculate the norm yeah, this L infinity norm and this map in our space E. In a sense, <clears throat> infinity, which, which, which is a bit from the point of view of geometry, but for calculations is, is good. <clears throat> so this is a... Um, 
some yeah, general that, fact. Yeah, that, uh, sorry for interruption, but I wonder what the right hand side of the blue inequality in the, your pro proposition mean. The blue inequality in the right hand side. Next one. Next page, below, below. Go down, go down. No, no, you don't go up. Yes. Uh, so line free from below. So you have a right hand side. Is blue inequality. Yes, yes, yes. The right yes, hand okay, side. I'm talking, I'm talking about Fuchner and dimensional banner space. So we have a convex compact subset which satisfies the mark of Frechet inequality with exponent m and constant m, then, then for, for each m, there exists a subset of this set for which we can calculate the norm of this binomial on this set via the following expression. So simply, the norm on this set we mean that you take the supremum over z in k of the modulus of your polynomial. Ah, I, see, I, see. I came to the point. Thank you. Yeah. And then the, the cardinality is less than n. And the cardinality of n is one plus m m n to power ni n blah blah. In the case of real, in the complex case. So in other words, this means that the space of homogeneous polynomials is with lambda, with lambda equal to embeds to an infinity n with this n. Okay, now, what does it mean that the, 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 the space satisfy, the set satisfy the mark of fresh inequality? This is, this is the definition. We say that k is satisfied with mark fresh inequality whenever there is an exponent e bigger or equal to zero, absolute constant, that for which polynomial on a Banach space general, we have the following estimation. This is a gradient, so this is the fresh derivative of k for z in k. So if this inequality holds for subclass of the polynomials, we say they satisfy the mark of inequality for p with the exponent. So maybe interesting example, Harris in 1997 proved that if you have a complex Banach space that the unit ball of this Banach space satisfy mark of such inequality with constant p e and exponent n equal one. So this is this is beautiful fact. You see, this, this, this inequality is, is a powerful for the, for the for calculations. So now I would like to show you applications. By the way, this, this kind of inequalities I showed you can be, can be interpolated, but no time in, in, in this big paper we, we, we show how to use vector valued interpolation and then machinery from the theory of abstract interpolation to get extension. Because then, 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 I mean, we can interpolate vector valued inequalities, but for this, not, not in all cases, because that, that, that delicate assumption is, is required. And, but, but no time because the, 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 a lot of definitions and, and, and machinery. So now I would like to switch to situation with Dirichlet polynomial in a recent time. There is a big interest in the theory of, of hard spaces of the Dirichlet series, which shows that this, in this case, the situation is completely different than in the classical space of hard spaces on, a, a, on, a, on, 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 the, on the disk or polydisc. This is related with the, with the, with the, with the analytic analytic number theory, there are many beautiful papers about this, but the, the main point in, in many problems is related, as we know, with the, with the Dirichlet polynomials. So quickly, so we show the combining Bohr vision, I will explain you what, what I mean, with the ordinary Dirichlet sequence um, uh, series that we can lift the, 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 the multi-dimensional KCZ inequalities to the random Dirichlet polynomials. So this type of inequalities played very, very important role in study of the 
of the unconditional basis constant or Gordon constant. So the, the important characteristic in the in in in, in local theory of Banach spaces on, on and, and also holomorphy. So we have a given subset of, of positive integers. And by its script DN, we denote the space of the polynomial. So the, the polynomials of the following form. So complex coefficients n to the power minus s, s in, in C. And this is a sequence of complex numbers. So such Dirichlet polynomials defines a bounded holomorphic function on the right half plane of C. And then this is a Banach, finite dimensional Banach space with the following norm. So we take supremum over real part of S bigger than zero of the modules of this of this complex function. And you think you know the theory of analytic functions, it can be shown that we only can run supremum over the imaginary part. Maybe Maybe let me show you. I was really surprised when I was uh, studying this type of problems. So, if you take a sequence a n to power minus one to n, this plays a, a, a crucial role in the study of Riemann zeta function. Let me let me let me recall a beautiful deep result of of, of Turan from 1962, which says that that the through of the famous Lindelof's conjunction. Which is related with the with the Riemann Riemann conjecture. So if, if someone disprove Lindelof conjecture, that the Riemann uh, hypothesis is, is not true. What is what is this? So this is this estimation for the Riemann zeta function on this critical line arbitrarily epsilon is equivalent the following inequality. So you see, if we prove that the special Dirichlet polynomials with coefficient a n minus one to n modules can be estimated by the following for arbitrarily small epsilon, which constant which depends on this epsilon, then this is equivalent to this famous Lindelof conjunction. You can see that special kind of Dirichlet polynomials as a deep application in that number theory. So now to formulate the result, we have a we have a positive integer bigger than two pi of x, then the number of prime numbers in this interval omega capital omega of n, the number of prime divisors of n, counting according to their multiplicities. And we define the parameters capital P of, of the set A. So we are looking for maximum of O prime divisors. And we run with all positive integers from our set N in the same situation for capital omega of A. So we have the following theorem. If, if you have a R bigger than P, there is a constant. We have a sequence, finite sequence of positive integers. We take the, 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 the sequence of Dirichlet polynomials yeah, in the space of our Dirichlet polynomials. Then we have the following estimation. The supremum norm over T and in the Ordich norm can be estimated by this expression. So you see, this comes in exactly this number, blah, blah. And this is the supremum of the, of the sequence. At, at a given t from R in the in the space as S prime, which is in L equal to L2, in the case R bigger than two, Marcinkevich L prime infinity. Okay, so this I mean we can imagine that to calculate, estimate those numbers is a really difficult problem because we don't know the numbers precisely how they look. So in concrete cases, in concrete cases, on concrete polynomials, so now we take a concrete polynomials, which are in, I mean, in application important, then we have this. Maybe I will show you quickly uh, the idea of the proof. The idea of the proof 
is by a famous, famous bore lift. So what, what, what is this? This was a great idea of Bohr. He, 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 I mean, he was interested in, in problems, of course, related in this period of time with the, with the, the Riemann conjecture. And he showed how some problems for the multidimensional case can be lifted to the, to, the, to, the, to the case of, of Dirichlet polynomials, Dirichlet series in general. So, okay. the trick is that this, the, if, we, if we consider the space of Dirichlet, Dirichlet polynomials, we can build via Bohr the following map. We map this polynomial, Dirichlet polynomials, to, to multi, multi dimensional polynomials that follows using the unique decomposition of the, of the positive integer as a product of power of times numbers in a unique way. And these powers of prime numbers for the decomposition of n, these generate multi index. And this is exactly this, this mapping. Then we use a deep Kronecker theorem that this R, if we plug to the, to the, to the, to the, to the multidimensional this, that this map has a range dense. Then this gives, this gives, if you, if you, if you look for this, then this gives that the space now, the space of trigonometric polynomials with this capital P of A and the degree omega of A, we can embed to an infinity n. The map is simple. This is exactly the value of P calculated and Z I, which, which, is, which is we are able to find sequence in this D with D equal capital P of A dimensional torus with the cardinality of this number for which we have isomorphic embedding. Via this isomorphic embedding, we, from the results for the multidimensional polynomials, we can recover the, the results for the Dirichlet polynomials. So, very interesting case is the following. Case. Whenever n is fixed capital and x is between two and, and we build the following set. And then this space of Dirichlet polynomials is exactly called the space of Dirichlet polynomials of length n, which only depends on the p of x many times. So now, now in this case, we can control this number. So you know, there is a, there are many, there is a Sierpinski apostle results which they show because we have a Chebyshev result. And then it shows that how the limit behaves proper. But this is a beautiful estimation, Costa Pereira from 1984, which shows how how the quotient of x over x, we know from Chebyshev, yeah, how, how this behaves. But this shows estimation for all integers. So now, if we calculate for this special situation, which is, which is for the Dirichlet polynomials of length n, we can really get the estimation to show in any inequality. And also for this, so simply, if we apply this estimation for this, for this situation, we, we, we get extension of the, of the famous uh, result of Felek from 1995. Because in this case, we have this. Okay, no time for the multidimensional because we had a problem. And then you see I here, 
here, for example, we showed applications to the, for the multilinear forms. And the, 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 the point is was to find embedding of this space to infinity. And this, this proposition shows the, 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 the cardinality of the set for which we are able to, to find the the embed, embedding. So you see, this is this is an infinity norm of this multilinear form, and homogeneous form that it can be calculated only looking for the supremum, not over the product of unit both, only over the, the, the finite set of elements. And this this set of elements, which is with a subset of the product of the unit both of the finite dimensional spaces, is as the cardinality of this type. So, as I told you, the, I mean, we have a serious paper with Stefan and Antonio and Antonio Perez Hernandez from Spain, published in the Journal of Function, Mathematician Nalen, and recently in, in Jisu journal, where we, we show applications of the of the of the Kahn-Stahl and Zygmunt inequalities to Boolean functions. This is amazing. Recently, Boolean functions found a deep application in computer function and quantum calculation and, 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 and uh, information and, and, and combinatorics. So this is, this is really very interesting. And then we show applications of, of, the, of the, the estimation for. Now, I mean, we just finished the paper where we show application to study also the unconditional basis constant and, and projection constant of the space of polynomials. And this is this is in the in the in the very recent papers. So we, we have a problem where to send it because we we just decided to, to do group because many 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 things are, are related. So I if you give me one minute I promised you quickly to show the, the, the machine take, which was uh, you. Okay, it's you have a moment, okay. Thank you. So, uh, we have a pseudometric, and the, 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 the end, by this symbol, we denote the entropy function as, uh, associated with the pseudometric. This is the smallest number of open balls with radius epsilon, which, which cover this hour. We have an orange function, the entropy integral of this metric, semi metric or pseudo metric space um, with respect to phi is defined by the following. So we take the inverse of this convex function, so this is concave function, and this is a function of epsilon. We integrate on interval from zero to delta of t, and this is, this is the, the diameter of t. So now we have a family of stochastic processes on T. <clears throat> and we have expectation of supremum, which is defined by the following, because it may be uncountable family. So this function may be not measurable, but we mean this as follows. Yeah. So look, I mean, for example, random stochastic processes is a random series of this type. Or basic. This deep result is here says was used that if you have a stochastic process in ordered space on a probability measure space, then if you have a this estimation, then the norm of the difference of random boundary of the different parameters can be controlled by the distance. New metric space because you see this the parameters are in the metric space. If you have this, then you can control then expectation of supremum of of these random variables in this language via this entropy number. And the point is that you build in a proper way random stochastic processes, and then you, call, you do estimation this entropy number, but this is in general very difficult. And it, it appears 
that in this estimation, like Bayard used, and in, I mean, I was a former student, the entropy numbers in the, in, in the language of, of pitch to finite dimensional spaces. And then it's possible to apply to get estimation also for multiple polynomials. So thank you very much for your attention. Okay, thank you for interest talk. So do you have any questions? If yes, so please raise your hand by using the button. Okay. Okay, so I'd like to ask you, uh, so Ben, go ahead. Yes, uh, I, 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 do you have a question? Yeah, I, I wanted to ask a question. You have this uh, beautiful inequality for general Banach lattices for the in R number, if, if I remember the, term, the notation. And then you have the KSZ uh, inequalities uh, for uh, in the case of orbit spaces. Are they obtained using this general result? Yes. So then for all its spaces, there might be a say more optimal estimate or it is? Uh, you, I mean, yes, you are right. In the case, it depends, it depends on the random variables. For example, very good question. For example, if we use, if we use, uh, the Rademacher sequence. So this is no, this is um, an independent result proved by uh, Rodin and Simeonov and, and then Linderstrom and Safiri that the norm of the, of the rad span of the Rademacher in Orlich L phi with R equal to is equivalent to Hilbert. Mm -hmm. So, in some cases, in some cases, really, the estimation which you will get on the right is equivalent with the estimation on the left. But in general, in, in, in general, in some cases, for example, for the, for the Kahn-Salem-Zygmunt inequalities, in some cases, the estimation on the right hand is also optimal. But in general, of course, not. It depends on the on the on the on the polynomials and but asymptotically, asymptotically in the case, consider people consider for infinity LPN are the best, the right hand estimation. And in some cases, it depends on the random variable, then mm -hmm. it's possible to 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 get that the asymptotic from the right and hand is the same. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Is there any other questions? So I'd like to ask a question, Miatek, okay? Yes. So in the series of um, inequality, you have to add, maybe have to add you and some logarithm, but I wonder how to remove them. Do you have an idea of how to remove logarithmic factor? How no? Avoid how to or... remove, remove the logarithmic log function? No, I don't. Could you? Could could I mean? Yes, I mean many. Yes, for example, so in in your theorem, in the, your first theorem, in, in that side, so you have log log here. Yes, yes. But do you have an idea of the press with uh, removing this logarithm by using some technique? And I mean, you see this. this yes, for this, example, yes. Yes. Okay. Okay, I see now. Hey, I mean, if you. If we look for this, yes, general expression by this one function, of course, it depends what kind of function you will take. For example, I mean, I, I calculated this constant for Marcinkiewicz space. Yeah, this okay. expression which appear here will depend, will depend on this, on this sub-multiplicative function which is generated by the concave function. It may happen that I mean you you will not uh, log them. This you see in this case Orlich, Orlich, Orlich space up to equivalent norm is Marcinkiewicz space generated by the fundamental. If you calculate the fundamental function of this, this is one over the inverse of this function calculated yeah. at log one plus 
N. In okay. this case, this coincides with Marcinkiewicz, but if you take a different space for this estimation, this function which appears here may not have a law. depends on the function, of course. For the estimation for the orange, for the asymptotic, you see, we, we, we want to have better estimation, so we want to touch the left yeah. hand side by the the best possible the best possible sequence in this case or this is best possible i see i see i i, I came to the point thank you so you are without it best possible and you we cannot really look at them right yeah of course it depends on the space I see, I see. if you if you for example from this general proposition instead of or you would take a different space you apply the machinery with calculate estimation of this constant, then you will get this function depending on n, it may be completely different. For some cases, even it's constant, you can you can you 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 can find asymptotic. It yeah. may contain expression which is which is does not contain log n. Oh, I see, I see. Thank you. Is there any other questions or comments? Okay, so since time is over now, I think, uh, so let us uh, finish this talk. Thank you, Mietek, once again. So please do uh, applause to, please give applause to him. Thank you once again. Thank you very much for your kind invitation. And I would like to remind that everyone received uh, Zoom link to the coffee break. So everyone is invited. Um, ben, sorry, uh, so since, I it's too, a little bit too late for me, so I cannot join your coffee break. Sorry for this. Yeah, okay. <laughs> sure, okay. So thank you. I will close the meeting now. Yes, please. Thanks. Bye. Thank you. Thank you once again. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Savannah.